Hello, we're going to talk about Lego uh, Mindstorms NXT version, uh, which is very similar to the latest model of the EV3 version. Uh, so we're going to get right into it. I'm going to go to my start menu. If it's in your recent programs, click there or click on all programs and you're going to find it in the Lego Mindstorms EDU NXT file or EV3 depending on your version of robot you have in your buildings. And we're going to click on programming. So while that loads, there's a difference between the NXT and the EV3. The EV3 is the latest model, uh, and the NXT is an older model that cannot be purchased any longer. Uh, so I would recommend the EV3. So with the coding here, uh, you're, it's very similar in the process. You're just going to see some slight visual differences uh, between the NXT and the EV3. I'm going to come here and I'm going to start a new program, and this is my test program. And I'm going to click Go. So I come to a blank slate. So the, very similar to the uh, Lego We Do, it's a good starting block for most students at all ages too. Uh, it's block, uh, it's almost like tile-based coding. So if I wanted to put in a movement, I put in a movement. If I want to put in a sound, I put in a sound. There are some additional uh, directions here. I can put in some wait times. I can put in um, wait until it's pushed, wait until there's a sound. Uh, wait until there's a distance, things along those lines. So that's pretty neat. What you're going to see is when you click on a block, your coding options down at the bottom of your screen are going to change. So I've got my gearbox here. I've got my sound block here, and they change. So my gears, I've got A, B, C, A, B, and C for my motors. Uh, B and C are typically your drive motors, and your A motor is uh, typically like an external arm, uh, a lift arm, or something else. and it's, it's the third option. You've got your forward and your reverse. Uh, just know, it de depending on the uh, way you, you built your robot, will depend on which direction your robot actually goes. So forward might actually be reverse, and reverse might actually be forward. So there's going to be some troubleshooting involved here, some really good critical thinking. Uh, you've got your directions. Again, you've got your uh, B and C. is not necessarily left or right, depending on how you uh, connected your robot in the build process. So you could be going to C, which is actually going to go left, or vice versa. Uh, so there's going to be, again, some trial and error. Uh, so most times you're not going to get a code right in the very first time. Uh, and that's okay. It's okay to show kids that in coding that there are options. Uh, you're going to fail and you're going to succeed. And, and uh, being able to troubleshoot, revise, edit, and really go through the EDP process will allow them to think better and grow stronger as learners. Um, math connections, you've got some things with distance, rotations, uh, degrees, um, and seconds. So it's something to note. The rotation is not, you're going to think it's the rotation of the wheel, which is about that big, that big. And you've got the motor, which is about that big. It's about uh, half the size of the wheel. So uh, the rotations, if the, the motor goes one rotation, it's about a quarter rotation or uh, a, a fifth of a rotation of the wheel. So you would think, how many rotations of the motor does it take for the rotation of the wheel to go 10 rotations? Uh, so you've got some great math connections in there. Uh, additionally, as you have the robot code itself to turn left or right, your rotations change, the distance changes. Um, some fun literacy connections. Uh, you can have students write stories, then code the robot to meet the story, to match the story, and when the coding is done and they've got it just right, you can have the students in their presentation uh, have the students read the story out loud and when they're reading the story, the robot is doing the actions of the story. Uh, so you can have it move, you can have it speak, and I'm going to put in, so say we're at the end of the story, and the robot finishes the task, everybody celebrates. Hooray! Hooray! The robot will say hooray. So it's really important that you, or it's a great opportunity really, that you allow the kids to connect the uh, story writing, a language, along with the math in developing code and robotics. Uh, 
So something to think about with your robot though, it does take time to build depending on how detailed it is. There are easy robots to build that take maybe 30 minutes or a class period and then the coding will take a little bit longer depending on the age and the ability level of the students and if you're going to have them write stories and do mathematics, measurement, and things along those lines. So allow the time uh, in, for your students to create in their learning. All right, good luck. Enjoy your experience coding robots.